I tend to make a, a, a body of work for a specific exhibition. I made the piece for the front space of the gallery. I knew the windows would be there and was interested in how it would look through the windows and then when you walked into the gallery and walked around the piece, um, how that would change. People seemed to see faces and like a, a, a crowd. Its process is just pulling out wire, wire from a spool, mangling it, then hanging it at a certain height. And then you begin to walk back to the back space and that room is much more dense, much more full and has more of an overt, colorful, playful quality. The rooms at the gallery across the street are a bit more contemplative. There are fewer pieces. And I, I, I like having um, distinct rooms so that I can play with the amount of work, uh, the amount of relationships, uh, you know, the density of the pieces to create an, a certain atmosphere. You know, the first thing you see when you go into that room is a piece titled Gravity. I made a latex mold of my head and poured plaster in. There wasn't any uh, outer structure to support the latex mold, so it just sort of settled onto the ground, flattened out um, like a balloon. And then there's the figure looking up um, that's standing in a, uh, a puddle of, of debris, which are the same elements that were used for untitled text collage, which were from various magazines cut with a, uh, a, a scissors and hole punched. Then I, I arranged them in a composition that simulated some kind of uh, description. The balloons have this sort of, in some ways, with the, with the skeleton, uh, a, a sinister quality. There's some sort of strange power play that's going on between the green balloon and the um, skeleton. Um, the, 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 it, it's as if the uh, skeleton um, was entangled in the string of the balloon and is like a trap and then is being hoisted up into the air. The lectern, I was thinking of uh, a, a place where people speak and I like the play between the, the gravity of the, uh, of the head and uh, the, the ascension and things kind of rising up and also the wall installation of charred wood, which reminds me of uh, kind of bursts like fireworks. You know, that's sort of a motif that I've used in the past that have sort of represented in some ways synaptic processes. Untitled Burning Bush, it's a continuous loop of wire and I mixed many gradients of different colors that continually change from one color to the next throughout the, the whole piece. And that led me to the piece untitled Genealogy, where all the lines of color come in from the out, outer edges of the paper and bifurcate. Some bifurcations end, some continue on, some go and they keep getting, kind of the bifurcations get smaller and smaller. They interweave with uh, each other. Threadscape, that in, in, the thread encompasses half of the field and then the sky the other half. And I was interested in the, the static nature of the sky with the similar static nature of that kind of velocity that um, it, seems to sort of represent. One is untitled Holy Paper, which is a large sheet of paper, and it's 
mounted to the board inside the frame at the top and then allowed to sort of dangle. So the further it dangles, just the, due to the natural waviness of the paper, the, the shadows that cast give the holes kind of a positive quality. They almost uh, look like um, um, they're bubbles. So it has sort of a strange bubbling quality. And then when you turn around from that piece, there is a, a ball, it's a styrofoam ball that was painted black and then covered with a type of material called flock, covered with black flock to make it as matte and flat as possible. So from a distance, it has almost uh, a quality of being a hole in the wall or just uh, being like an eclipse of some sort. The piece untitled Ego is just the word ego typed. I, I typed it fairly small on, um, in Photoshop in, I guess, Helvetica type. And then I kept blurring it where I felt, I, I wanted it to, to be um, blurred such that it just could barely be read. You'd have to be a certain distance from it to read it. That's the communicative process. I see of making art, finding those, those unions and intersections between myself and the viewer, people looking at my artwork.